In today's Google Ads tutorial, I will show you everything from setting up your first Google Ads campaign, finding the right profitable keywords, to setting up stuff like negative keywords in the backend, which could potentially save you thousands of dollars in potential ad spend over the long run. Now, on top of all of that, I'm actually going to give you guys some free resources down below, which you can use along the video. There aren't going to be any upsells, no core sales, no private mentoring thingy, just 100% free. So to get started, head over to ads.google.com and right here just click on start now and sign into your Google account. Now I will actually structure this video so that uh, the information is going to build on itself. However, you can also use the timestamps down below if you want to. Once you are right here, just click on create your first campaign and then put in your business name. Uh, now as for this video, I'm just going to build up some example ads for a video editing agency, video production company. So I'm just going to put in Krause media right here and then you will have to put in the page that you actually want to promote. Now once you are done with that just click on next and now Google will basically try to link some accounts to your Google Ads account and now actually we aren't going to do this right now we are rather later on going to connect all of the things that we are actually going to need. So just skip this uh, and then you will have to put in the overall goal for your campaign. Now Google right here is going to offer you a lot of different goals like purchases, submit lead forms, phone call leads, page views, brand awareness, uh, app promotions, leads and much more. However, actually, it doesn't really matter too much what you're going to tick here either way. So let's, for example, go with page views right here, uh, because uh, what Google actually is doing right now, uh, they're basically trying to force you into using their new Performance Max Google AI campaign, which actually isn't ideal at all. Because with this Google AI campaign, although the overall setup is going to be way easier and way quicker than doing it manually, now with this Google AI campaign, you aren't going to have a much targeting and customization options as doing it manually, which will actually result in you spending way more money for, for your customers essentially. Because with Google, we're actually going to follow a PPC model, which basically just stands for pay-per-click, where you're only going to pay for each click on your website. And Google actually often tries to kind of make things easier for you by offering less targeting options, which will actually just result in you spending more money on your ads and therefore Google also making more money. So actually we don't want to enroll with this uh, Performance Max campaign. We actually want to click on view other campaign types right here. And now right here, you are going to see all of the other campaign types that Google has to offer. Now, the most powerful one of these uh, is going to be the just a plain search campaign. And let me actually demonstrate you why. So if, for example, someone is going to put in video editing agency right here on Google, uh, chances are pretty high that they're actually already in the market of looking for a video editing agency and buying a service. So as you can see, all of these sponsored post threads here are going to be from companies that are going to use Google Ads. And now though there are also some organically post, uh, organically ranking websites right here, basically with Google Ads, you're kind of taking the shortcut into ranking high on Google, uh, which actually kind of works really good because people already have the buying intent. So if someone, for example, is going to look for hiking boots men, then once again, most likely they are already in the market uh, into actually buying hiking boots. And therefore it is going to be much easier to actually uh, convert this person into a paying customer. Okay, so we are going to select search right here and then just click on next. And right here, you will then have to set up the keywords. However, quick disclaimer, Google actually often changes up the order of the uh, campaign creation process. I don't know why, but if you're following along, um, maybe you're going to see the create ad screen right now. Uh, either way, I will actually leave you the timestamps down below so that you can skip to the parts that you need. Or also, I will leave you some more infos in the Notion document because sometimes with some clicks, you can actually get the right order, which would be setting up keywords first and and then the ads later on. Either way, before we're going, uh, going to set up our keywords right here, we will have to first of all understand the overall structure of our Google ad account. Now, basically inside our ad account, we are going to have different kind of campaigns. Now, this graph right here basically works, kind of works as a hierarchy. So the campaign would be our first uh, tier basically. And now the campaign is going to mark the overall goal, um, which you basically want to achieve, um, which is then going to be subdivided in different kind of ad groups. We are basically 
actually going to create multiple ad groups to kind of differentiate between them and to find the ad groups that are going to work the best. For example, one ad group could target stuff like best video editing agency, top video editing agency, and then the other ad group, uh, something like video editing services, video editing services near me and so on. And inside this ad group, I already said this, but inside this ad group, we are then going to have multiple keywords. Now, usually we aren't going to have uh, more than eight keywords inside this and less than four, because if you're going to have more than eight, uh, you will rather have to open up a new ad group. And if you're going to have less than four, basically it isn't worth it to actually create a new ad group for this. Now, I really hope that you understand this graph right here because it is super important. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. So if you understood this, we can now continue by setting up our keywords, which is super important. Now, actually, as you can see right here, by default, Google is going to suggest you some keywords that you should go for. Now, uh, same as the performance max campaign beforehand basically we want to delete these keywords because these keywords aren't really going to offer us all of the targeting that we actually want now before we are going to enter the keywords it is way more important on how we are actually going to enter them because with google you are going to have three different keyword match types which would be broad match phrase match and exact match but what does that actually mean now this graph is going to represent this very well so basically exact match just means that you are going to have a low reach but a high relevance actually the highest relevance possible and then with partial match you are going to have kind of a mid high relevance and also a mid low reach uh, on the other hand broad match does have the lowest relevance but the highest reach now we are actually not going to use the broad match match type at all and let me explain to you why let's for example take the example that you put in the keyword lawn mowing service now if you're going to use broad match on this uh, your ad will basically show up to all sorts of searches that somewhat relates to your keyword like for example lawn aeration prices and so on so basically we can't really target this and we can't really influence who is going to click on our ad as you can see this is called comprehensive matching on the other hand a phrase match is going to then show up for stuff like lawn mowing service near me hire a company to mow lawn landscaping services to cut grass so basically this is going to be for searches that is going to include the meaning of your keyword so still pretty powerful and then actually the most powerful one is going to be exact match with the tight matching now this is actually only going to show up on searches that are the same or that have the exact same meaning like for example lawn mowing services and grass cutting services now to use exact match you will have to use these brackets and phrase match you will have to use these quotation marks and broad match uh, you will just have to put it in naturally now actually you are may going to ask yourself right now but for what should I rank what should I rank for which keywords should I target well let me actually show you my quick three-step formula on how to find some keywords that you can use in the beginning obviously you can really take this even further and you can spend way more time on this i actually made a 30 minutes keyword research tutorial right here however generally in the beginning you will have to get started with some keywords and then later on you can optimize this on the go once you have some data on which keywords are going to work and so on so let me introduce you to my keyword formula now first of all we are going to have the location plus offer keyword type basically this is going to be stuff like a video editing agency new york new york video editing agency or for example new york dentist new york lawyer and um, this is also going to include stuff like near me so we can actually put in something like attorney near me hotel near me and so on so this is super powerful for location and driven businesses but also for stuff like video editing agencies now normally for a video editing agency uh, to actually serve customers uh, from new york i don't have to be there right however still people are going to type in video editing agency in new york and you can actually fulfill all of the these orders even if you're not located in New York and therefore these keywords are actually pretty powerful then we do have best plus offer this is just going to contain stuff like best video editing agency top video editing agency and best video editing discount best video editing agency for youtube best attorney for da 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 so basically we can actually uh, include our offer right here 
This would be, for example, this best video editing agency for YouTube, best attorney for da da da. So basically, uh, we are going to differentiate ourselves by actually listing our offer. And therefore, if someone is actually going to look for a video editing agency for YouTube, they are more likely to actually click on our ad than on any of the other ads that aren't going to include that keyword right here. And then the third option would be offer plus incentive. Now, this would be stuff like video editing discount, uh, video editing under $100, hiking boots under $200, hiking boots on sale, and so on. So basically, by just putting in these incentives, we are just going to drive people to get on our website and to then actually buy something. All right, and now we can actually get started putting in some keywords. So actually, uh, I also included this in my Google Ads playbook, which you can find down below. Um, we are going to need to use uh, this keywords match type tool right here. And right here, we will then have to put in our keywords. So I will actually make this really simple because I don't want to waste your time. So I'm just going to put in best video editing agency, video editing agency, New York, top video editing, agency as well as um, hashtag one video editing agency. Now, as you can see, for this, I actually only use the term video editing agency. And this is actually intentional because um, right now, obviously, we are creating our ad group, right? However, uh, I would actually recommend you to create multiple ad groups for different kind of terms. So let's, for example, take the same example for video editing agency. We could now actually um, create one ad group for video editing agency. Then we could later on duplicate that ad group and then change this to done for you video editing or to video editing management. And although you probably think right now, how does this make any sense? This is just the same meaning all over again. Well, yes, but still you are going to then see one ad group that is going to outperform the other ones, which will also result in you paying less for your customers. Now, um, let's actually now click on phrase match and exact match right here, then click on make keyword list. And now we're going to get the list of all of our keywords, which I'm just going to paste in right here. Right here on the more settings, we can then set up stuff like locations. Now, when actually choosing the location for your ad, we are going to differentiate between three different location settings. The first one would be international. So if you, for example, do have an e-com business or generally just a business that, business that is going to serve worldwide, then this would probably be the location setting that you should go for. Because with this, you are going to create one ad group and inside this ad group, you are then going to have one country, then a new ad group for that country and so on. And then national, this would include stuff like states, territories, cities and counties, and then local. Now, local is a little bit more advanced because with local, you will actually have to pair radius and zip codes. Now, this basically just means that basically with Google Ads, you can set the middle point of your of your location targeting and you can then set the radius around that however if you're only going to use that radius on its own you aren't actually going to get the data on where people are going to buy something for you and therefore we actually do want to pair this with the zip codes function um, so that eventually you're going to see which zip codes are going to perform the best and actually, uh, as for this video, I'm just going to say that I'm solely going to target the USA. So I'm just going to click on custom locations right here. And then I'm going to click on advanced search. And basically right here, you can then see um, your overall thingy. And then right here, you can set the radius if you want to. Um, now I will actually just tick add locations in bulk. And I'm going to go back to my Google Ads playbook. And I'm going to copy all of the US states from right here and just paste them onto this click on search and then click on target all. Now you're probably thinking, but why aren't you putting uh, just United States right here as a whole? Well, this basically comes down to the same thing, why we actually do want to pair radios with zip codes, because actually we do want to see which states is, are going to outperform the other ones. And we can then later on use the data to find the states that are going to perform the best. And we can only do that if we're going to add each of these states separately. However, you can just copy this from right here and then you're easy to go. Just click on save and then as for the other location options, this is actually super important, click on presence right here because otherwise your ad is going to show up to people that either are regularly in or also have shown interest in your targeted locations. So basically if someone is interested in New York, then still your ad could potentially show up to that person, which doesn't make any sense in my opinion. So actually just select presence right here. 
As for exclude, just click on presence right here. Um, now this is also something which we can do. We can ex actually exclude a certain kind of um, thing right here. So if we, for example, do want to exclude Dallas right here, we can click on that. And now only Dallas is going to be excluded. This is just a, an example, I'm sorry guys. And then I'm going to click on save. As for languages, um, just stick with your basic language right here. Uh, so basically just the overall language that is going to be in your ads. Just a quick little side note, you can actually also, for example, set up ads in Spanish for people inside the US and so on. So you can really play around with this, but generally just stick with the language that your ad is in. Now, as for audience segments, actually a lot of people waste time on this, but essentially we don't actually have to set this up because this is rather only for YouTube campaigns. Now, as for networks right here, we basically do want to exclude the Google search partners because otherwise your ad can also show up on stuff like ask.com. So if someone is going to put in video editing right here, um, my ad could then potentially show up for this. I don't know why it's lo not loading, but either way, we don't want to ex we don't want to include the search partners because we solely want to actually show our ads on Google and nothing else. Same goes for display network. Just ex exclude that and then click on done. Now we can click on next. Right here we can then get started designing our actual ad. However, before diving into the technicalities of this, let's quickly go over the overall structure of an ad. Now, basically, right here we do have our headline. The headline is going to be by far the most important part of an ad because this is basically going to be the first thing that someone is going to read when seeing your ad. Then right here we do have the display URL. Now, one thing which is important to notice is that with this display URL right here, basically, you don't necessarily just have to put in the URL that this ad is going to lead to. You can rather use this to actually improve your click-through rate by adding in stuff like clickup.com slash free bonus slash get started offer and so on. So basically you can kind of trick around with this. And then right here we do have the description. Now big disclaimer, I know, but basically no one is going to read through this word for word. However, still it is actually super important to include some buzzwords in this description. Like for example, free forever, pre-made templates or also numbers to work pretty good like 1000 plus integrations right here. Uh, and then right here, we do have our ad assets, which we're going to dive in in just a minute. These are super powerful and super essential for your ad. However, let's get started with the display URL right here. So I will just name this a free uh, welcome offer. And then we can get started by setting our headlines. Now, basically, as we've already put in our keywords beforehand, uh, Google is going to give us some recommendations. So let's, for example, go with top video editing agency, or let's also add something like hashtag one um, service for editing videos. Now, as you can see, as for the headline, you are going to have a total character count of 30. Now, generally, you should try to make your headlines as large as possible, which will then improve your overall ad structure uh, by making it larger and by therefore improving the overall real estate on Google. However, please don't do any keyword stuffing. If you just have 24 characters per headline, this is also all right. I will add a new headline called video editing agency and then we can actually get started doing some special headlines. So by simply just putting in these brackets right here, we can, for example, select the keyword in search and headline. Now this, when actually adding this, this will basically allow you to display the keyword that the person has put in. So if someone is going to put in a keyword editing service and then they're going to see this ad right here, this keyword, keyword editing service is going to be displayed right here, which in some cases can be really useful. However, you can actually also use this countdown um, keyword incentive, which is basically just going to insert a timer that counts, uh, that counts down to an event, which therefore obviously is going to build up some scarcity, some FOMO, fear of missing out, and can once again improve the click-through rate of your ad. Uh, and then we also do have location insertion. Now, if you, for example, are a local business, um, you can just apply this and you can then, for example, put in uh, best agency in and then basically this is going to read something like best agency in New York, best agency in Los Angeles and so on. 
Now you can actually also get yourself some ideas right here uh, by simply just clicking on it. And you can actually also add these promotion phrases, for example, unbeatable prices, great value for money, lowest price guarantee, and so on. Now I think you already know this, but I'm usually not a big fan of Google suggestions. However, I think they actually did a pretty good job with this. So just read through this and maybe add some uh, phrases from this onto your ad. Now, one other thing which I would like to mention is that for some different kind of headlines, um, basically, it is going to make sense to appear in different kind of positions. But what do I mean by that? Well, basically, as you can see right now, we have put in eight headlines. Uh, and however, there are only going to be three headlines displayed on our ad. This means, first of all, that all of these headlines are going to rotate in between. And then Google is basically going to test which of these headlines to work the best, which one they should choose, which one are going to convert the best and so on. So Google are going to do this automatically. However, you can actually also say um, that certain headlines should only be in position one, for example, by using this pin icon right here. So if you want to uh, let top video editing agency only be shown in position one or position two or position free and um, you can actually do that which in some cases actually does make quite a lot of sense uh, right here you will then have to add your descriptions um, now i will just quickly uh, paste some descriptions onto this uh, which i've actually pre-made as you can see now this isn't going to be anything special this isn't going to be rocket science however i've included some buzzwords like 100 percent money back guarantee or something like free revisions or uh, basically done for you video editing and so on now you can also add multiple descriptions right here, which once again are going to rotate in between. But let's now actually get to the asset types. Now these assets are super important because all of them can basically improve your overall ad and your overall digital real estate on Google by first of all making your ad longer, but also by basically adding new features onto your ad. But let's quickly cover that in detail. So first of all, we do have the sighting extension. Now one thing which is important to know for the sidelink extensions is that most of the time these are going to show up like this. However, uh, this is going to differentiate. Sometimes Google is only showing this really small, uh, like kind of just a, like, like a normal text. Uh, and sometimes Google is actually doesn't show this at all. So this is really important as for the sidelink extension. But basically as for the pros, um, this just enhances the overall user experience by providing direct links to specific pages and also increases ad space I basically call this digital real estate. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I guess I just learned it that way. But either way, it is going to increase your ad space and improve your visibility. Now, as for the cons, basically, this is going to require relevant and distinct landing pages. And you also may need to regularly update um, your links. However, generally, these cons aren't that much of a con in my opinion i would actually highly recommend you to set up these sidelink extensions either way because they're going to improve your ads by a tremendous amount as for the use cases these are basically best used when you want to direct users to multiple pages on your site like for example product categories contact pages or special offers for example uh, let's go with this video editing agency example and um, one sidelink extension could then be uh, our portfolio or or offer the clients we've worked with and so on. I think you get the point. But basically, sidelink extensions, super good. Let's now get to the promotions. Now, basically, these promotions can just effectively highlight different kind of sales that you have going on. Now, basically, the only thing that I personally would use them for is to basically use this on special events or holidays. So, for example, Black Friday. Now, as for the cons, this actually does require a promotion. I know rocket science but either way you will have to set up promotions for this to work and the use case basically is ideal for highlighting special offers like sales uh, and particularly peak shopping seasons like black friday or christmas otherwise i personally wouldn't bother setting this up however obviously you can and you can then just test out the different kind of results to see if this is actually resulting in higher converting customers now either way let's get to the price extensions these are basically going to show different kind of products that you are going to sell and directly are going to show the price of these products. Now, this is basically too useful to improve your click-through rate. But as for the cons, this is basically going to be less effective if your prices are not competitive. So if someone is going to look for 
hiking boots let's go with that example and your hiking boots are going to going to cost six hundred dollars uh, and you're going to display that no one is going to buy from you and therefore it isn't going to be as good if your prices are quite high now as for the use case this is useful for businesses with a clear pricing structure like e-commerce sites site providers restaurants and so on but otherwise i'd usually tend to not use them now, as for the call extensions, these are super useful. Uh, as for the pros, this obviously encourages the immediate phone calls, boosting direct engagement and, calls, and also can directly lead to um, basically phone leads. And the cons, basically when using this, you will have to have someone that can actually handle the call and that actually is an office for these hours that you're going to promote that ad. For this to work, you will have to only show up your ad uh, on office hours, which you can do pretty easily we're going to touch on that later on now as for the use cases this is going to be essential for businesses where immediate contact is beneficial like emergency services reservations consultations and so on but also for stuff like attorney's office and so on now right here we do have our asset types the callouts these basically just work as call to actions inside your description and these are basically used to highlight a unique selling point so right here you can then basically enhance your ad message without affecting the character count of the main ad which basically also just is a way um, to making your ad bigger and then as for the cons you only are only going to have limited space now you can basically emphasize specific benefits with this like free shipping 24 7 support uh, unlimited revisions and so on now as for the structured snippets basically these are going to be used to showcase a range of products or services and they are going to increase your ad relevance by providing more detailed information on what you're actually going to offer this mostly is going to be used on e-com sites from my experience um, so as for the use case this is going to be the best for businesses with a wide range of offerings like different kind of services product categories and so on now let's Let's go for the lead form extension right here this is actually super powerful in my opinion now first of all this facilitates direct lead generation from the ad because when using this lead form extension um, no one is actually going to click on your website rather they're going to directly within google put in all of their information and this also reduces the overall clicks of actually getting a successful lead now the con would be that it is required to actually have a follow-up for this so that you will actually convert this lead into a customer so this is ideal for all sorts of businesses focused on generating leads like service providers b2b companies or educational institutions now as for the app uh, in extensions let's just quickly glance over these obviously these are going to be useful for promoting app downloads and only useful for mobile apps and the use case is to increase app installs who guessed it right now let's now continue with setting up our ad right here you can then actually set up your site link extensions and um, so if we for example are going to put in our portfolio right here you can see that this is going to show up something like this um, obviously there are different ways of displaying this and so on now basically the setup uh, for all of these is going to be pretty self-explanatory so i won't actually go over this however if you have any questions along the way as always leave them in the comments down below and i will try to get back to you as soon as possible and also if you find this video helpful make sure to like and subscribe now let's now get on to the next part which would be setting up our overall bid strategy which actually is really important to understand because otherwise you're going to spend way too much for all of your clicks now first of all we do have to select what we want to focus on now in most cases if you sell something if you sell a service if you sell a product i would actually recommend you to select conversions right here i would highly recommend you to do it because then this is just going to make the whole process way easier however because the setup for this is going to be way different depending on where you're going to host your website on and so on i will actually leave you all of the tutorials on how to set up conversion tracking right here in the notion document down below which you can watch to easily set up conversion tracking now as for this video to make things easier and to show all of the settings for everyone i will just select clicks and then this is really important we will have to set a maximum cost per click limit because otherwise google is just going to spend whatever they want and obviously we don't want this to happen so let's to actually understand how much we should bid on our clicks let's quickly go over that formula which you can see right here so basically your cost per click is going to be determined by the ad rank of the ad below yours divided by the quality score of you plus 0.01 percent 
end. And I know probably uh, right now you're thinking, what is this guy talking about? But let's quickly cover this graph right here. So let's for example say that Advertiser 1 has a quality score of 10 and a max bid of $2. This would result in an ad rank of 20, okay? Then on the other hand, Advertiser 2 only has a quality score of $4. However, he pays a maximum of four dollars per click which would result in an ad rank of 16. basically you do want to have the highest ad rank as possible to rank first on google and to get clicks onto your website then advertiser free has a quality score of one and a max bid of eight dollars so he is paying eight dollars per click advertiser one only two dollars and his ad rank is eight so basically this table should show you by improving the quality score you can save a tremendous amount on potential ad cost but you're probably thinking what does the quality score actually mean what does it stand for well there are three main factors uh, taking into consideration with this quality score first of all the ad relevance so basically how closely your ad matches the intent behind the buyer search for example if you are going to uh, rank for best hiking boots but you're then going to sell sneakers on your website and you're only going to sell sneakers basically this ad isn't relevant at all to the buyer and google also is just a business they want to get the basically they want to get the buyer the best results possible and therefore google isn't going to push your ad at all if your ad relevance is low now then the expected click through rate also is taken into consideration this is basically going to be the likelihood that your ad will be clicked when shown we covered a lot of ways to improve this by for example making your ad larger um, putting in the right headlines and so on so if you carefully watch this video, I think it isn't going to be too hard to get a quite high CTR. Now, either way, the third thing would be landing page experience. So with this, Google is going to get data like bounce back rate, how long a person is going to visit your sites and so on. Uh, and by using this data, they're going to see how relevant and useful your landing page is to people who click your ad. So with that being said, I think this table should be a lot more clear. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how does the ad rank actually get chosen? Well, this would just be the quality score times the max bit. Um, so as you can see, 10 times 2, 20, 4 times 4, 16, and so on. So if we now get, get, go back to this formula right here, your cost per click is the ad rank of the ad below yours. So let's, for example, take 16 right here, uh, divided by your quality score plus 0 0.01. So for simplicity's sakes, let's actually just go with a quality score of 10. Now the ad rank of the ad below us would be 16. So it would be uh, 16 divided by 10 uh, and then the plus 0 0.01. So obviously 16 divided by 10, uh, this isn't too hard, it's going to be $1.6 plus 0 0.01 cent. The total would be um, $1.61 cents would be our max bid. Now, you're probably asking yourself, but why should we actually add $1 to this? Well, the reason for this is that we still want to bid more than the person below us. Uh, and Google also wants to make money. Google wants to make a profit. And therefore, we actually do need to bid more to actually get, that cli to actually get clicks onto our ad. Now, if you understood this, it is probably going to be way easier to actually determine how much you should pay for your ads. Now, with that being said, uh, if you are going to put in something right here, Google is after some days either way going to tell you how much you should actually put in, how much Google is going to charge per click. However, you will have to first of all um, spend some money in Google ads so that they will actually show you that data. Either way, I will put you some industry averages on screen right now, as well as in the Notion document down below. You already guessed it. But either way, uh, I will just go with a maximum bit of three euros right here. Then I'm going to click on next. And now we will have to set the budget for our ad. Now, Google right here is trying to force you to spend quite a lot of money. 83 euros per day, in my opinion, is a little bit too much to get started with. Um, you can also set a custom budget. So let's, for example, say 10 euros. Um, however, obviously, keep in mind that depending on uh, how much you're going to spend right here, either the more or the less data you're going to get. So with 10 euros, it is probably going to take a couple of days until you have enough data to optimize and scale your ads. However, if you, for example, would have put in 50 euros, this would obviously make things a lot easier. But let's just go with this example of 10 euros. Uh, one thing which also is important to notice is that this is going to be uh, the average bit per day. So for example, if you're going to have a 10 euros average, then the spending habit would probably look something like this 
on some days they're going to spend 6 euros, on some days 17, on some days 15, on some days 5 and so on. Now once you are ready with this click on next and then you will basically have to put in your payment information so that you can actually get started paying for Google Ads. So um, basically just put in everything right here and once you are ready head over to the dashboard. Let me now show you how to set up negative keywords which could potentially save you quite a lot of money. So once you are on your Google Ads campaign dashboard, and um, by the way they always do change this, they are, there are always some UI updates to this, um, therefore once you are right here just find the search for, uh, option right here because this probably won't get changed anytime soon and put in negative keyword right here and select this. Now negative keywords are basically just keywords where Google Ads aren't going to show your ads. So for example I'm just going to uh, add a test list and one negative keyword which I would recommend you uh, to add in almost all cases would be free. Because obviously we don't want to target people that are going to put in free video edits, free video editing agency and so on. We don't want that. Then we can actually also do some market research. So as you can see, uh, for example, this would be a video editing agency. Uh, in creditors would also be a video editing agency. So right now I'm just going to copy all of the names from these uh, competitors of us and I'm going to add them onto our negative keyword list right here. Because if someone is going to look for video editing agency in creditors then they're actually going to look for that exact service for that provider and therefore it doesn't make sense for us to actually market in that niche. Um, you can actually also use a tool called SEMrush to get way more insight uh, on what kind of competitors you actually have to actually build up this negative keyword uh, keywords list even more. However, to get started with, I would just recommend you to actually just ask yourself, okay, in what cases do I not want to actually show up on Google and then add these negative keywords. Now, one other feature which actually is super powerful is the Keyword Planner tool right here. Now, obviously we already do have our own uh, campaign set up right now. However, um, to actually build up even more campaigns to find new ideas, we can use this Keyword Planner right here. So for example, I would first of all need to change the language, sorry, and then I would change the, language, uh, the country to USA. And then we can put in something like video editing. And then we can get the results. First of all, we are going to see the overall stats. So we are going to see average monthly searches, um, basically the bid, the competition, uh, the free month change and so on. So overall tons of great things and we can basically see uh, some keywords. We can and we can basically just use this super powerful data to find new profitable untapped keywords. Now with that being said I actually made a full in-depth tutorial on doing proper keyword research which you can watch right here. Thank you for watching, if you found this video helpful make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.